Hi everyone, just a quick, short, simple tip video today for Blender. I've been doing a simulated client project with a couple of friends where we're basically just testing how well we work together in a team. And as a part of that, I am sort of in charge of like some visual rendering stylings, like visual style development. And without going into too much detail, uh, there's like a kind of pattern element for the logo and brand identity that's made up of hexagons, right? And a pentagon in the center here. But we were looking at kind of variable things between like prismatic colors and glass, a little bit like liquid glass and having it maybe like phase in front of things and doing things like that. But when I showed one of the team members this, they were like, how the hell did you get that prismatic kind of look to it. This is extremely simple, like it's just a glass BSDF, but I figured I might as well just show you like the setup because it doesn't even have any dispersion. But if people find this like cool as a starting point, and like as you can see, you know, you can change between like colored and non-colored, then I don't know, you might find it useful for your own work, maybe branding, maybe motion design, whatever. So the nodes straight up, let me just uh, change my theme back using Holt tools. The nodes are just this. And a lot of people have some really cool dispersion shaders, which this is not. This is basically just faking a stylistic kind of prismatic effect with these color ramps. You see, we're not even considering the entire rainbow. Texture coordinate using the reflection vector input to mapping, separating, taking the X gradient, adding a little bit to that to basically shift its position, which may or may not be required on the reflection. I was using that while I was testing the other vector inputs. Then color here, and this thread up here is basically just doing some hue variability. So if I plug that in, we we'll get like a green version instead. Then you can see that this factor is basically controlling between the white and the colored version, which is plugged into the B. So again, if I swap that back, we'll get it going kind of blue, pink, purple. And then the rest is just lighting. Now, obviously, every time I talk about lighting, it's always in relation to my Afterglow asset library, which is a product. Yes, because that's what I do. I make products. Kind of hard not to talk about the things I make for myself if they're tools that I actually use. So this is Studio Cage 4 available in the Afterglow pack. And I'm showing you this. You can recreate this. Like you don't need the Afterglow product. It will make your life a hell of a lot easier if you want to recreate this, but you can see what's happening here. Physical mesh-based lighting. We've got a disc with a wide soft light, so it's a gradient intense at the center and then slightly fading out to the side. Again, you can recreate this if you know how to do it. Otherwise, you could just put an area light there, you know, pointing down. Won't look as good, but it will work. On the bottom, similar, but the light is slightly more inner. And then we've got some around the edge upper left, lower left, upper right, and lower right. And then around the center, we have these ring bands, which are basically like rectangular lights curving around. So they give space like for camera to look around, but they also provide the light. So what that does is it gets you some nice looking reflection on pretty much any shape and pretty much any angle. And also if lights appear in the reflections, they don't look so obvious or weird. You see, they just kind of like form in and become part of the shape. But likewise, it's quite easy to get some other types of effects with this because I noticed that, I mean, in the community, we've got people like Fiend, shout out to Fiend, who do a lot of this like, you know, pretty prismatic, high bloom, sometimes light background, sometimes dark background, organic metallic type things. And there's a lot of like really sharp light and color. We can do something similar. Hang on. If I change the light catcher, like make it dark. Okay. Kind of see what's happening here. This is getting closer to that style I'm trying to describe where it's like really, as I said, just like sharp, colorful. What about bloom? We have use nodes and no board. Yep. So we can adjust the like thresholds of the bloom, increase the glare size a bit, basically make it a little bit dreamy. I can push the strength past its limits if I wanted to. Back a bit to white. Have a look at that. And things look okay if they like phase through each other as well in this. Usually like, you know, intersections look a bit weird between objects, but for glass, it's not that bad. Do you see what's happening? You know, they can phase in and out, but the intersection point, because they're both kind of transparent anyway, doesn't look too weird. So you can do animations where it phases through itself and, you know, it won't look too strange. But someone clever could do like a, a custom bevel thing, which I suppose you could also do in shader. I'm not sure how that would work transparent wise, but yeah, I just thought you might be interested in trying to replicate this if you do like this like glistening, simple glass thing. A lot of people maybe sometimes like ignore the glass BSDF. I know that a lot of dispersion shaders don't even rely on it because you know, when you've got a basic shader doing so much work, it can get a little bit limiting if you want to try and make something from the ground up. But 
it is there if you need it. Do a little bit of a frosted glass. We could put like a noise texture to add some imperfection and scratches on that. And again, color being added doesn't have to be uniform. You could do some kind of gradient or have it apply to only a few of them. So again, the point of this project for me, it's part of a simulated client project thinking about visual look development for things like animations, like branding things where a logo is forming, unforming, etc. We mentioned liquid glass, obviously, if we you know, had something rounder, we would get more of like a, a lensing effect going on. Let's turn that strength down a bit. So you could totally get creative with like lensing things in the environment with an appropriate type of object. Now I'm looking at a pill shape. Maybe that'd be a good start for some kind of like supplement, like an omega supplement, omega free fish oil, flax seed oil, something like that. Let's, uh, what way? I mean, orange is usually the kind of color. That's just you shifting though. Let me make a new ramp. So I'm just playing around before we close this up. I might, I'll put this on Patreon as well, maybe like a demo file for the style. Just so if you are a patron on the $5 tier and above and you like the visual style, you might want to give it a go, but you don't really want to set it up, then maybe I'll make that available. Damn, really interesting at like the kind of base of this pill shape, you know, where the light focuses. You can see like the reflection of the lighting environment and yeah quite interesting. Let's just make that back a bit brighter. So it kind of punches more through. The color's not quite right. And maybe it's slightly too reflective if I just slightly increase the roughness a little bit. Not too much. Do a little bit of color change. You know, it's a bit like a fish oil pill. Uh, I don't know if I've got any immediately close by. I've got something similar that's much clearer though. Like that, obviously this is less orange. Maybe a bit more like that realistically. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll put a little resource together and I'll put it on the Patreon for the $5 tier and above. More things are coming to Patreon now, given that we've finally established that the Patreon income becomes the wage for working on free projects. And obviously I want to give more back to my supporters. So sign up at patreon.com slash Curtis Holt. You'll find a link in the pinned comment as well or the description or on my website, curtisholt.online slash Patreon. Again, I mentioned Afterglow. I've got tools and products available to help you with your Blender workflow. They are really good. And obviously I use them all the time for my work. So if you made it this far through the video, put a let's do a light or a kind of sparkle or a glass type emoji. You've got quite a lot of options this time in the comments. If you put an emoji in the comments, I will see if you made it this far for the video. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.